A Boeing whistleblower set to testify in the Senate tomorrow. That individual filed a complaint with the FAA about potentially questionable manufacturing practices surrounding the 787 Dreamliner. Meantime, Boeing is down 11 straight sessions. Joining us now for more, Ken Herbert, RBC Capital Markets Aerospace and Defense Analyst. Ken, great to have you with us. Um, yeah, hi, good in, morning. Boeing had a call uh, yesterday basically saying that they don't believe that any of these claims are true. They've, they've run the gamut in terms of maintenance checks on a lot of uh, these jets that are in service and they haven't found any issues. What's your take on, on how this is weighing on the stock? So a couple of factors. This is certainly weighing on the stock, you know, in the near term on, on the back of everything that's happened with the 737 MAX and obviously all the other issues at the company. So certainly weighing on the stock from that standpoint. Our view is, you know, there's other issues probably around production rates and MAX and management transition and other items that are that are weighing on the stock as much. But certainly uh, 787 is critical. We don't think uh, this fundamentally is a is a long term risk to the story uh, on Boeing as it relates to the 787 uh, right now, but but certainly one of the factors that's weighing on the stock. What is your rating on Boeing right now, and how do you see this playing out for, for let's say, people who are holding the stock right now? What's the, what's the hope here? What are potential catalysts? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, we're outperformed rated on the stock. We do think a couple of key catalysts coming up first on, on the risk side when they report their results in a week and a half, I think expectations are relatively low, but it will be, in our view, an opportunity where management will provide more of a, a you know, clear the deck, so to speak, in terms of setting expectations this year. And that's around production rates on the max, around free cash flow. Um, but again, we think that's largely expected by investors. I think bigger picture is you're looking at a management change here in the next uh, few months, potentially with an announcement. And that's by far the most positive catalyst. We do also think that there's significant opportunity with the resetting now of production levels on the max and some of the efficiencies we should be seeing out of the factory with these lower volumes that should certainly help with execution into the second half of this year and, and in uh, 25 and 26. So it sounds like, Ken, you're sort of expecting a, a kitchen sink sort of quarter in terms of what their guidance might be. But then when a new management, when a new CEO comes in, we should probably expect some sort of a kitchen sink again. <laughs> um, I would think that's what typically happens when a new CEO takes over. Um, so. It, it sounds like a very bumpy ride ahead for your outperform rated uh, stock. Yeah, yeah, a lot of volatility we expect over the next few months. But we do think, to your point, when we do get a new management team, there is likely a kitchen sink approach. And, and I think that the important thing to remember is, obviously, that would be expected. But I think also whoever steps into that role um, will have a significant amount of support, in our view, whether it be from the regulators, the politicians, customers, uh, both on the commercial side and on the defense side, suppliers. Everybody wants Boeing to succeed. Boeing, it's it's important for the United States for Boeing to succeed. And we think that sentiment will give whoever steps into this, this new leadership role significant runway to execute what we think will be some of the tough decisions and ultimately reposition the company here to benefit from what is a very strong demand environment across both the defense and the commercial portfolio.